Hello friends, welcome back to a, another sewing vlog. Last week we... Anyway, um, last week we decided to make a couple 18th century petticoats to go under my like 18th century version of the Scarlet Witch. And this week, we're still working on petticoats. Um, I really wanna make a tucked petticoat, an 1890s tuck petty, tucked petticoat to wear under my long skirts, uh, like this one. I'll post a photo here. And then I also uh, will, after that, post the inspiration photo or like the photo of the, the petticoat that I'm kind of drawing inspiration from. I did have my Patreon pick between a few different styles of uh, like, um, insertion lace, lace, pin tuck, tuck combos. And so um, this petticoat is um, kind of the most representative of the one that they chose. And I probably will just add a little bit of insertion lace because this one has it and it looks really cool. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to draft my own pattern for this. So if it's successful, um, I will put it up on my Patreon for people to, uh, for them to use and, and that's that. Um, th the plan kind of is to have a, like a rectangle in the front, a trapezoid next to it, and then a, two, like a larger, two larger rectangles that get gathered down in the back. Um, I can't decide if they're gathered down and then stitched permanently or if I'm going to gather them down, put a ribbon inside of them and then like tie it on using a ribbon. Um, it looks like a couple of the garments that I was looking at as like inspiration have that kind of like closure in the back and it sounds like it'd be easier. I just don't have a ribbon um, like in my studio that would work for that. So that would mean I'd have to go out into the world and get some. So I don't know, we'll see. But um, the first thing that I kind of want to do is uh, figure out the tuck situation on the bottom hem or the bottom like portion of it. So I've kind of like divided this into two, like a top and a bottom. And the top, I, I'm pretty solid on that design and like how that's gonna go together. Again, aside from the back closure. But for the bottom, um, there's gonna be like a piece of insertion lace to separate these and then there will be the ruffled down like two and a half times like strip of fabric that will also be the pin tucks and all that other stuff. So I think the first thing that I wanna do is kind of make a prototype segment of the um, the pin tuck part um, so that I have an idea of what like what the pin tuck ratio is going to be or the tuck ratio I keep saying pin tuck I'm sorry it is a, it, they're called a spaced tuck because a pin tuck is technically an eighth of an inch or smaller and I'm not sewing them that small so I think I'm gonna start with doing a prototype and I think that's what we'll do today and then maybe even cut out all the fabric. Um, so I'll start with pin tuck thing and then we'll go from there. So yeah, I'd like to get this done. I'd actually, if I can figure out the pin tuck thing pretty quickly, I think I can get it done between today and Friday and then Sunday start a new project. Um, obviously, like you, if you saw last week, I always say like, oh, I'm gonna get all these things done and then I don't quite get as much done because I get distracted by my phone, which I'm trying not to do. I took Facebook off of my phone this week in a hopes to remedy that. But then I post in my Instagram stories and wanna talk to y'all because I really like talking to people. So who knows, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's that, let's let's just see how far we get and uh, go from there. Yay! So let's talk math really quick. I know this part of my videos is always super boring for everyone, but basically, I want I have a ten inch piece of fabric, right? That I need to use, or that I'm gonna use. Four of those inches 
are given to this lovely trim here. And six of those inches are gonna have pin tucks or tucks in them. So I did some math for my like I like how I want to do how I think I want to do my tucks. So I only want four tucks. And each one like the width is gonna be a half an inch and the space between the end of the fold and the next tuck is gonna be a half an inch, which would make a full inch. So one full inch per tuck. So that is gonna combine it down to four inches. So then I'll have two inches at the top that are straight. And then I need a half an inch for my, my like seam allowance. Um, so that makes six, inches and a half and then I know by my math my like um, basically like the width times three so half an inch times three is one and a half so I need one and a half inches per tuck and I have four tucks so that's six inches so we're basically gonna try and cut out a piece of fabric that is eight and a half inches long we're gonna mark it up I'm going to use like a purple marker for this and we're going to mark it up and sew it and see what happens. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to cut 10 inches this way and eight and a half this way and then mark my tucks and go from there. Okay, so this piece right here is only four and a half inches, and I need it to be six inches. So, um, I, my um, formula is like, kind of confusing to me. So I just counted basically. Um, I know that this is one inch and 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 this right here should be one inch. So like I'm going to add one more tuck. Um, so basically like each tuck is two inches. I want four tucks so that'll be eight inches. Then I need two more inches for the top so that there's this because I want it to be like like this. So that is 10 inches and then a half an inch for each seam allowance. So 11 inches. So we're going to do this again with an 11 by 10 inch piece and hopefully it will like look how I want it. And if it is, then we can officially like say that it's 11 inches for this and, um, and it'll be 11 times 125 inches. So basically we'll just, you know, figure that out in a few minutes, <laughs> but yeah. And I only have 120 inches of this, but I figured when I cut out the 125 and seam it all together, it will probably come down to 120. And if it doesn't, I, we can make it work, but I bought literally all of this that they had left. So it's so pretty. I love this scalloped edge a lot. That's anyway. So yeah, let's try this.
right, so I just kind of, this is not the fabric I'm going to use. I'm using a, an actual white, not like this off white. This is just something I pulled from my stash. But basically, this is what we're looking at for this. I think what I'm going to do, so 11 inches is great. I think I might add, I might, what I'm thinking of is I kind of want this section, like this, and then this, and then like this to be the same width. So I'm actually gonna add two more inches. So we were at 11, I'm gonna do 13 inches. And then I actually am gonna add an extra half inch to this top, so I have a full inch so that I can roll this under. Um, I might not need the whole amount, but it's, it's just so that I can have the whole amount if I want it. And then the same with this, I wanna be able to actually like roll it under so that I can have a clean edge here. Um, so, with that being said, 11 plus 2 is 13, plus 1 is um, 14. I like that. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, cool. So now, I guess, I have to write that down. And then I can um, start cutting my fabric out. Right, so this is about as far as I got uh, today, which is just like gathering the back. I accidentally made an oopsie and did my French seam wrong on this side. Um, it's not as full as I expected, but uh, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna roll with it because I don't really want it to be super full since like it's going under a skirt that like I'm wearing out on a normal regular basis and I still want this nice front to be flat versus like super puffy. I think if I were to do this for historical purposes I would have made this seam here like this trapezoid seam a lot wider so probably 10 inches at the top and then like 15 inches at the bottom and then um yeah that's probably what I would have done and then kept this at 10 at the back. But I like it still so far. Like, it's it's very wearable. So uh, yeah, and I decided to use some of that twill tape that I bought for my like 18th century garments on the waistband because that just seemed to be the easiest. Um, so yeah, and then also like the ruffle will add some floop down there and that's really the point is to kind of give it a little bit more loop down there so yeah that's where we're at uh, when I come back I will work on the like bottom portion of it that will have the flounces and whatnot so or the flounces the uh, the tucks and whatnot so yay all right friends so I have done a lot of thinking oh it's Friday by the way uh, like 9 yeah 9 27 a.m. Um, I've done a lot of thinking over the last day or so since I uh, wrapped up the part of the skirt that we were talking about on Wednesday and I am going to take it apart and redo the back and possibly the side. <sighs> I want it to be fuller on top, like not super full obviously, but the way it looks right now is just not 
it's not what I want. It doesn't look like the image. And like, I have to also assume that the petticoat that I was looking at online probably is on top of something else because of just the sheer amount of space it looks like it's taking up. But I am going to spend some time seam ripping and I think I'm gonna just talk to you guys while I seam rip uh, some of the, I have to take the waistband out. I'm 100% taking the back panel out and instead of having two 10 inch square, two 10 inch wide panels, they're gonna be two 20 inch wide panels. And then I am thinking about the trapezoid looking one that's in the middle and maybe making it 10 inches at the top and then like 15 inches at the bottom or 17 inches at the bottom. Um, but I'm thinking about that. That's gonna mean that the amount of fabric that I purchased for the ruffle is not enough. So I'm gonna have to go to Joann's and get some more. Um, or I can look in my stash and see if I have anything that I could use that I have enough. I will do that first. Let's not spend more money if we don't have to. Um, and then if we, then if also like figure redoing all of that means I have to rethink the math for the um the length of the tux luckily the width of that is going to stay the same so don't have to worry about that but that means I then have to see if I have enough cotton to do it so I might have to go to Joann's to get more cotton and I might have to get more of the bottom hem ruffle thing that I want so step one we're gonna rip things apart. Step two, we're gonna do math. <laughs> I won't do it on camera this time um, because I know it's just absurd. And then I think the third step will be to just cut the new panels and then see how much of the fabric I have and then see how much of the trim I have and go from there, yeah? But by the end of the day, I wanna have the new panels in and at least a game plan if I have to buy more things and then also starting on the tux I'm really hoping I have enough fabric to do the tux also because that well mm -mm. we'll see but let's do story time all right and for this part of the video you guys are just really gonna you're gonna get like <laughs> ring light and embroidery machine and you know all the BTS because why not? But uh, yeah, so what do I want to talk about? This is so strange. So like I used to live stream um, on Twitch. Like that was kind of like my first form of like, I guess like tutorial type or educational type content. What happened was we moved to Georgia uh, for Toby's job. And um, then basically I broke my foot and um, like I had already transferred Starbucks because I worked for this is back when I worked for Starbucks. So I had already transferred for like to Starbucks and the store that I was at like for some reason I got like a $3 pay decrease like per hour. I was making like 12 something in Chicago and I was making like I think 930 here. And that was pretty, uh, pretty shitty. Um, I, I felt like I went into work every day kind of like really destructively. It's like, I just was really mean to myself. Um, I don't know any other way to put it, but I was not very nice to myself about this situation. And I was taking commissions at the time. I had no friends out here and, um, I kind of just decided I wanted to on Tuesday nights stream and I like called it Twitch Tuesday. Um, I think at the time Amanda was streaming and April was streaming. Um, but I could be wrong. April could have come later, but either way, I know Amanda was streaming like once a week for a couple hours. And, uh, that was a great, like I would watch her streams you know, to get my, my friend interactions in. Um, and then like I started streaming again, just one night a week and I really liked it. I started like making friends and then I broke my foot, uh, like about four or five weeks into this year. 
not this year, <laughs> into moving here and uh, like working for Starbucks. And my supervisor or manager at the time told me that, uh, so there's like a four to six week recovery process. Uh, and the first three to four weeks, it was like highly recommended that I'm off my foot, like completely off of it, like sitting down all day. I worked at the Starbucks that was a drive through only to drive through walk up. And so there wasn't really like any jobs that I could do that allowed me to sit all day. And so basically what the manager told me was if I cannot work for over two weeks, um, I will like essentially be fired or like lose my job and then be a rehire. So not fired, but like I would be, I would lose my job and be a rehire. Um, and then that means I would start at like 8.75. So I was already taking a $3 an hour pay cut. Um, and I was already being treated like I didn't know how to brew coffee or like work for the company that I'd been working for for eight years. So I, while I was like kind of um, taking my time like off that I needed to for my foot to rest. I was streaming a little bit more. Um, and I was doing way more commissions. Like my commission biz, like my commissions were just like going through the roof. I was making way more money than like I had ever made in my life. And, um, I got my health insurance through Starbucks. So a big part of me leaving would have been like, well, how do I have health insurance? I just broke my foot. I can't like, you know. So I started looking into Obamacare and, um, cause this was back in 2016, I think. And it was within like the amount of money that I, you know, could afford. Like it was, it was like comparable to the same price as Starbucks, um, health insurance, which I, I don't even remember what I was paying. So I left Starbucks like completely and I decided it was time to try uh, the full time like costuming thing. But I had no friends out here at this time. Like I was, <laughs> I was friendless. I was, you know, whatever. And um, it's kind of lonely, like working alone in a new place where you don't have like a support system yet. So I streamed and I started by streaming like five days a week, I think, or three days a week. Basically, anytime Toby wasn't home, I was streaming and it was pretty fun and it was a really cool way to like teach people how to sew and like talk to people about sewing. Um, but it was kind of back when like sewing and like the creative community on Twitch was brand new. So we would get a lot of people coming in that were like, what? Like, what is this? This is the most boring thing ever. So I would just, I mean, like it was so strange. Um, so I streamed for a long, long time, about four years. Um, I don't know why I got to this part, like this story. Anyway, that was streaming on Twitch. That was a, a lovely time in my life. Maybe I started talking about streaming because setting up like this makes me kind of feel like I'm streaming again. Um, although there's no chat to interact, like there's no chat for me to go like read, like struggle reading, like, oh, what did it, what was it that you said, Toby? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Cause that's what would happen when I moved into this studio, which I'm so thankful for because I can, I really am optimized in here. I have so much room, so much room for activities, but, uh, I'm really optimized in here, but um, I'm not very optimized for reading chat. Like I don't have a projector and like my, my source of light is my windows. So I can't project my chat on that, that wall. So I'm really like, I don't even, I don't think I thought about, like I guess if I had my computer system on this side, like I could have done that or I could project it on like either of these two walls, but it doesn't matter. I used to struggle bust my way through streaming in here because I couldn't read chat. Uh, and eventually I saw, I just stopped streaming, but um, it was, I did my live event for uh, RNK a couple weeks ago. Well, it's like a, a month ago now, actually. Actually, exactly to the date. Anyway, sorry about that. 
Uh, and I was like, oh, this is that struggle bus I remember of like trying, like I was sitting in the corner over there and I was trying to read my monitor and I was like, why am I trying to read this? Like, just teach them how to sew case. <laughs> Have any of you ever streamed on Twitch or like watched people um, either like gaming or creative on Twitch? That's uh, that's what I'm going to ask y'all because I, I honestly would like to know if or like if any YouTubers watching or like costumers watching, have any of you ever considered streaming on Twitch? I'd love to hear like your thought process and like your reasons why you would stream or like maybe reasons why you haven't streamed yet. Um, because I, I still think Twitch is like a great platform for people to get on if they really want to build a community and be a part of like, you know, kind of build the bridge between a community they might already have and they don't get to interact with. Let me know what you guys think. Like, do you like more like chatty intermission type like parts of vlogs where it's like not just this is what I'm doing, but like, let's have a, let's have a, a, a chat. Um, or do you prefer just like, okay, how is the progress going on this project? Like, what are you working on next, Casey? Like, you know, let me know. Tell me, tell me down in the comments what kind of, um, style, I guess, of vlogging you like. I'm going to end this chatty part here. Put on some true crime podcast while I finish doing this because I am going to take... I've, I've made up my mind. I'm taking out obviously the back two, but I'm gonna take this side one out as well. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth a shot to, to try and um, get this uh, like a lot wider. And I'll update you guys when I have added the new ones so that I can tell you the new sizes versus like math. I'm not gonna bore you with any more math, I promise. <sighs> okay, so some updates because it is now 6.15, you know, whatever. <laughs> I got like some work done and then I went downstairs to watch WandaVision and then I took a nap and then I ate some food and now I'm here. It's, you know, it's been a week. But anyway, so I really like the fullness. Like it's still not exactly what I expect, but it's not bad. Uh, so I like the fullness of the new panels. I did do like the trapezoid shaped one is like 10 inches at the top and 15 at the bottom. And then the back ones are 20 inches by 20 inches. Oh wait, no, they're 20 by 29, which is 29 is the length. So then I did my math to figure out how much I need that bottom ruffle. And it needs to be about 200 inches. I have 180 inches of my ruffly white eyelet. I thought I had 120 inches, but I have 180, which is really great news when you think about it. So we're just gonna do 180. It won't be two and a half times like the length or the, like it won't be that much more. But I think that's fine because I, it means I don't have to go to the store. And again, like we're trying not to go out into the world and we're trying not to spend money. So um, I am going to basically try to do the best narrow rolled hem that I can do on um, the like petticoat piece that I have. And then I'm going to attach this white lace to it. And then I will measure the uh, I will measure my, uh, like my next ruffly piece, the one that's going to have the tucks on it and get that sewn in dish strip and then check in from there. I don't know if I'll get further than that because it is 615 and, um, around eight is when like, but I did take a nap, but around eight is normally when I'm like, bleh. like my brain just turns to mush, you know? I don't know if you guys are like that. Like, I normally start my day around 7, so by 8 p.m., I'm like, okay. I'm going to see how much I can get done by 8, and I will check in before I'm done, or I will check in if I get a burst of energy. Um, I also am waking up at 7.30 tomorrow, and I need to run. Well, no, 6.30, so I can get there by 7, 7.30, because I'm running 11 miles. So we'll see. 
We shall see at 8 o'clock how I'm feeling. All right, so it is 8.30 and I'm gonna about to wrap it up for the night. I got a little further than I had anticipated, which is great. Um, as you can see, I have um, drawn all my lines. So this is a four inch gap up here. And then this is one inch. And these are uh, like the half inch ones and then an inch, a half inch, and an inch. And this is on the back side of my fabric so that I can basically like, fold it from the front and then um, the markings won't be seen. So I will get these sewn up on Sunday and I will get this ruffled down and attached and then I'll also get the ruffle, like the eyelet fabric attached. I think I'll do the eyelet fabric to this and then ruffle this and then attach it to the skirt and then I just have hooks. So. I don't know, probably like three or four hours of work on Sunday. And then um, I will probably spend Sunday like editing this so that I can start on uh, like Monday, I can get going on digitizing the pattern and everything. Hello, it's happy Sunday. So I have, it's almost, it's almost three o'clock right now and I have basically been working on the uh, bottom like ruffle hem part of the petticoat. Um, I have tucked all four tucks and then I've rolled the top edge and done an overcast stitch on the bottom edge. So I'm basically ready to add the eyelet fabric and then ruffle that whole piece down and attach it to the top piece and then add a hook and eye. Um, right now though, I am doing a live stream for my Patreon. I do a monthly live stream and today I'm gonna to be talking about digitizing embroidery and actually digitizing the embroidery piece for the costume that you'll see me making coming like this upcoming week. So I'm pretty excited because you know, last week a lot of people had digitizing questions and they you know y'all said you were somewhat interested in digitizing so I thought this would be kind of like a fun small way to start that and then go from here um, it will be available on my patreon forever like I'm gonna actually pin like make a pinned post with the live streams because I want to do monthly either tutorials or craft alongs um, I've already planned next month's haven't announced it or anything but so basically anyone that signs up uh, at any point can have access to anything that like any of the live uh, things that I did so yeah that's what I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna come back or come back like I'm gonna be doing that on my computer but then I'm gonna sit back down and uh, get to sewing the rest of this petticoat if I uh, 
if I don't get it done before the sun goes down, uh, I'm just going to film the like me wearing it at the end of the or at the beginning of the day tomorrow because I've been filming some of my like get ready with me aspect of it or like some of my like here's the finished looked aspects pretty late at night and I think it just kind of for me it feels like the quality is lower so I'm going to try to film it when it's daytime tomorrow we'll see but everything is going pretty well with it so far I have no complaints All right, so it is Monday morning. I did not get this finished last, well, okay, I got this finished at like 6, 6.30 last night, and I knew that I wanted to set up this backdrop. Um, this is like my spring backdrop. I've had it uh, for three years now, and last year I set it up in like February, and this year I was like, why am I waiting? Um, mostly because I do have to, if I'm going to use my embroidery machine, which is behind me, I have to like pick it up and move it, but it really isn't, it takes like three minutes to move. I'm just obnoxious, but I did have to press this and I didn't even do a great job. Um, I am getting more clips that are at the top of it. I made sure that all my shots, like you can't see the outline, but it's fine. Uh, I... All the clips, oh, you can probably hear Toby. I'm gonna, give me one second. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sorry if you could hear Toby laughing. Anyway, uh, so anyway, um, I bought more, I have more clips coming in so that I can pull the sides taut so that it's a little bit better. But overall, I am I wanted this backdrop because whenever I make things that are white, and they shoot them in front of this. I don't know, they look so good. Or even pastel colors or light colors. And part of my project that I'm working on that I can't talk about um, is gonna have a lot of white and then just a little bit of pastels. So I thought bringing this out would really just help motivate me get to the point of photographing that stuff. Um, also, it really brightens up my room. Um, I'm not like, like I'm such a fall, Halloween, spooky type person. But like, there is something very special about pastel colors to me. I don't know why. I think it's because growing up my room was green and pink. Um, like pastel green and pastel pink. Anyway, why am I talking about that? I just really like pastel colors. I think they're really pretty and soft. Like I think of pastel colors, I think of soft. When I think of soft, I think of happy things. Um, so, but same with black and grays though. Uh, whatever. And sepia tones. Anyway, like sepia tones make me think of like coziness and like, mm, like sitting by a warm fire. And uh, thank you so much for <laughs> watching this video and for um, watching my vlogs in general. I know that this isn't the content a lot of people signed up for and I know that a lot of people like, are just not interested in the vlogs. Um, and that is okay, because I really love making them. Um, I really like thinking about how I want to edit them and what kind of, like, fun little things I want to do. So, if these aren't for you, um, that's totally okay. 
I will get around to making like full making of videos when I finish full costumes but until then this is kind of what I really want to do and this is kind of the type of art that I really like making and I also every now and then want to produce more cinematic videos but I, I have a lot to learn about color grading first um, so like with all of that being said Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sticking around. Um, this is literally the longest outro. Thank you so much. And then also a shout out to my lovely patrons. Um, thank you all so much for uh, supporting my art and being around here and um, kind of going through this little adjustment period that I've been going through with my Patreon where I'm trying to really make it video content forward and um, like craftsmanship forward and talking more about that kind of stuff. So with that being said, um, thank you for being here. Thank you patrons. You can sign up to my Patreon up there. And um, I really hope you liked this like cute petticoat. Oh, um, the pattern will for sure, or the template will for sure be available on Patreon. Uh, that's all. Yeah. Tell me what's going on in your life. Did you, did you watch the finale of WandaVision? Look at this. Look at look at this. This is gonna be the hardest like outro to edit, I think. But anyway, okay, bye. Let's see you next week. <laughs>